Well, thank you so much, Ivan. Thank you for organizing this uh, conference. Thank you for inviting me. And also thank all of you for uh, coming to this talk. My name is Devon. I am the head of the Quantum Technologies Division at Glow Photonics. Now we're a deep tech company that centers on hollow core fibers. Our quantum tech is a new uh, division, which has started when I left academia and came to industry. So I'm an academic, I'm very new to industry, just so you know. <laughs> Um, we are a French-based startup in Limoges, France. Uh, we're mainly R&D. Uh, most of our people who work for us are PhDs. Uh, we have uh, cleaning rooms, fiber drawing powers, fiber drawing powers, towers. But the most important thing is we have really strategic partnerships on that with national, international institutions. And we're here at EPIC hoping to uh, enlarge this uh, strategic partnership, particularly for quantum technologies. Now, the main thing we work with, the main core technology is a hollow core uh, family of fibers. This is actually something close to us. Our founder, Feta Benabid, was one of the creators, especially of the um, inhibitor coupling hollow core fibers. And you can see images of the fibers here. The most important thing with our fiber technology is there's a hole in the center of the fiber. It's not solid anymore. And the guidance of the photons actually occurs around the hole in the center inside the microstructure cladding array, which you can see an image of right over here. Now these fibers we can make from various geometries from five micron uh, diameter to 500 micron diameter. And my part is actually to uh, do quantum optics inside these fibers. So we can go for uh, the range, we could uh, incorporate, because there's a hole in the center, we create a vacuum. And inside the vacuum, the same level of vacuum you see in a laboratory, but inside this vacuum, we can incorporate extremely cold atoms. Here are images of both of rubidium atoms, although we could also use strontium atoms that are cooled to one microkelvin, then loaded inside the fibers. At this point, we can guide both light and atoms inside the fiber over kilometers of length, increasing the atom light interactions and any nonlinearities that could be possible. On the other extreme, we could also extremely hot atoms. For example, uh, uh, with the same fibers, we could actually incorporate highly ionized and hot gases. In this particular case, it was 1000 Kelvin inside the same fibers themselves to do any sort of experiments involving this. And our goal, our vision is to shrink the capabilities of a university grade quantum optics research laboratory inside these fibers. Remember, we could create vacuums inside there. We could load them with atoms and we could hermetically seal them creating a, a laboratory-type environment that, uh, in a very small volume. In principle, our idea is a quantum optics lab inside the palm of your hands. And for this particular talk, we want to focus, of course, on quant uh, quant entangled photon generation. Now, of course, all of you know the uh, particular uh, applications from linear qu quantum computing, quantum key distribution, and what's really important for us, quantum memories and quantum interconnects. Now, there are certain uh, issues with quantum memories, quantum interconnects. One is that the effectiveness of all these technologies uh, really depends on maximizing correlations within the photon pair and minimizing uncorrelated photon pairs. Any photon pairs that have similar statistics to, our, to, your, uh, to the photon pairs, but are, do, are not involved in the entanglement itself. The second thing is really to create quantum interconnect, interconnects to connect quantum computers and various different quantum op uh, optics elements, you actually want to use things in the visible light simply because quantum memories, the atoms that are used in these quantum technologies really absorb light in the visible spectrum. However, to transport them, you want to transport them in the telecom simply because there's the uh, technology is so large uh, for this. So one of the things you want to do is create entanglement between visible and telecom. And for this, we kind of uh, are launching our new uh, entangled photon source. We call this TwinLAS. It's a vers versatile entangled photon source, which uses our hollow core fibers that are filled with noble gas atoms. And I'll explain exactly why we use noble gas atoms, but particularly we use xenon. This allows us to get a very versatile platform. The first thing is by uh, tuning the parameters of the fiber, the cross-sectional area and the length, we could actually increase the interaction lengths and create variable, tunable uh, nonlinearities. We could engineer dispersion relation, relationship to have really good phase matching conditions. And the most important thing is Raman free propagation. And I'll explain a little bit on this. So of course the first technologies, the standard technologies, what I actually uh, started with when I was 18 years old, 
were these crystals. And the crystals are really great to create entangled photon source and it allows to get to such an amazing technology level. However, there are certain problems. Uh, besides the uh, nonlinearity and the spectral domain, the biggest problem is the generation of uncorrelated photons. These are photons with similar spectral characteristics as your entangled photons. However, they're not entangled. And this is really due to Raman type effects inside the crystal itself. Now, to resolve some many of the problems that crystals uh, created, there's a big push to take this generation of the entangled photons inside fibers. The first was to create new standard silica fibers. And this actually gave a lot of advantages. The first thing is you could, you, you could have a tunable uh, nonlinearity by just changing the fiber geometry, the diameter and the length. Also, moreover, the fact that you're in a fiber allows you to collect all the light inside one, the spatial mode of the fiber itself, which is a distinct advantage with respect to crystals. The disadvantage is that now you have the light going through really large amounts of silica through the fiber itself. And that actually increases the Raman scattering all along the fiber length. Also, the spectral uh, range is limited by whatever fiber properties you have. And this is where our technology comes in. We use these halocore fibers, a very particular brand of halocore fibers called inhibited coupling fibers. We still have the tunability of the nonlinearity due to the fiber geometry. However, uh, because we, the, the fibers are hollow and we use xenon gas inside the uh, fibers and xenon has zero molecular structure, the creation of uncorrelated photon pairs is close to as zero as possible. In addition, we have a huge spectrum. Unlike common fibers, both silica and other halocore fibers, the fibers we produce at GLOW have a really large spectral domain going all the way from UV to uh, 1600, 2000 nanometers. In fact, these are old. We're producing new fibers that can go all the way to 200 nanometers. This produces a really interesting uh, capability because in principle, inside the fibers and the fact that xenon has uh, nonlinearity across the entire visible spectrum, we can in principle create entangled photons all throughout the visible spectrum and infrared. And more importantly, what we do now and what we can uh, tune is we can create entanglement between different wavelengths. For example, the twin last which I showed creates entanglement between 1560 nanometers and 780 nanometers, which is almost perfect because 780 nanometers is a point where you have quantum memories using rubidium and 1560 is telecom. So this can be the basis of transmitting entanglement across long distances. And this is what, if you look at other technologies, for example, other types of halocore fibers or also silica fibers, our spectral uh, domain is much, much larger. But the biggest advantage that we feel uh, we could provide uh, to the community is our uncorrelated photon count. So if you look at a standard uh, source, you have many uh, photons that are uh, being created. So this is a graph where you show all the different processes which can create fo single photons. Now, there's a photon pairs, the good uh, things that you really want that have correlations, and that's the red zone over here. But just uh, as you have photon pairs, you have other processes, Raman, Raman, parametric, DC process, which create accidental photons. So the ratio between the wanted, desired photons and accidental is not really large. Our process, because we use xenon, because we use halocore fibers, minimizes the number of accidental photon pairs. And almost all of our correlations are within the wanted uh, uh, correlated states. You can see this in this particular graph over here. We're showing the, uh, uh, the ratio of uh, correlated photon pairs with respect to accidental photons with respect to the G2. Our work is the uh, red triangle on the top left. So we have really a high, uh, uh, a high fraction of uh, desired correlated photons with, with respect to accidental and also a very small G2 itself. And this is a technology we're really trying to, uh, to push and to develop. Our problem, and you can see this is some of our fiber drawing facilities that we used to, um, uh, to pursue this technology. Now we have the basis. What we're looking for is partners to be able to push this further. Now, what do I mean by push this further? So we already have really good G2. We already have really good uh, un uh, correlated with respect to uncorrelated. However, our photon count is low. Right now, we have about 50,000 uh, photon pairs per second, and we're only limited by our pump. Uh, right now, we have access to a pump beam, which has a one megahertz uh, repetition rate. So we're looking for partners that can help us, A, 
increase the uh, photon count rates, but also uh, most of our work is in using entangled photon pairs for ghost imaging type things. We don't really have that much resources uh, or capabilities in quantum key distribution. And we're looking to see if there's any partners that would be interested in our type of photon source and would help us sort of develop this into the quantum key distribution route. Well, anyway, thank you for your time and uh, let me know if you have any questions.